Ninja Trader 8 is the best desktop charting application. This is thanks to its superior customization and custom indicator ecosystem. Programming in NinjaScript is just really easy and powerful, and that's why there are so many advanced indicators for Ninja Trader 8. Ninja Trader does have its quirks though. That just comes with the territory for a program that is so sophisticated. I've been using NinjaTrader now for over five years and I've picked up a thing or two along the way. I've found solutions to common customization requests, powerful features that traders miss, and common pitfalls. A few tips and tricks can go a long way towards getting the most out of Ninja Trader 8. So I spent all of Christmas break and then some putting together this handy guide of simple tips and tricks for you. I'm not sure how many tips there's actually going to be. There's I, there's there's going to be a lot. I'm going to keep track of the numbers though because that's the excellent way to do it. So let's get started. First tip, I want to make sure that you are aware of the other resources I have on this channel. I have a free indicator suite full of useful hacks. These quality of life improvements are something every Ninja Trader user should have. I'll have a link where you can sign up with your email for that free package. And I'll also put it in the downloads channel of our discord. I also have a paid suite of indicators. It includes the advanced spread indicator, synthetic dollar index, and a bunch of order flow toys. These are tools that I can't trade without and every trader can make use of. It's also only $100 for a lifetime license, so make sure you head over to speculatorseth.com for that. I also have a few videos on this channel to help you get started programming in NinjaTrader. It's easy to make basic indicators in NinjaTrader, even if you have no programming experience. Programming is where the true power of NinjaTrader 8 shines, so don't shy away from learning it. Okay, so free suite, paid suite, and programming videos, I'm going to count that as three tips. So now on to tip number four. The number one thing I find beginners miss is how to set up your commissions. You may have noticed the commissions window. You can bring this up from the control center by going to tools commissions. Unfortunately, this window is not very useful. This window is only for editing the commissions templates. You're most likely using NinjaTrader brokerage, which already has default templates defined. What you need to do is tell your different accounts which template to use. To do that, you need to go to the accounts tab of the control center, right click on your account and select edit account. You can then select which commissions template to use from the dropdown. Make sure you set this up on your SIM accounts too. Otherwise, the back tester won't calculate commissions, even if you have the include commissions checkbox checked in the strategy analyzer. Number five, Ninja Trader comes with so many indicators that it's easy to miss things. One that I find everyone misses for the first time is prior day OHLC or open high, low, close. Want to know when we're breaking the previous day's high? This is the indicator that you need. Simple thing that almost everyone uses and it's the most common question I get asked because it's kind of hard to find. I've also found some useful features in more ignored indicators. For instance, tip number six, the price indicator which draws a line at the current price. Seems redundant since you can already see the price, right? Ah, but the price indicator also has options to graph the historical best bid, best ask. Super useful if you're trading an instrument with a big spread like the micro treasury yield futures like I do. It's also useful for debugging tick replay indicators. Oh yeah, tick replay. We have to talk about that. So I guess that's tip number seven. Super powerful feature that they hide from you by default. It's always the first thing I change on a new installation. Maybe I should have covered this one first, but whatever. Just deal with my ADHD, okay? Anyways, Tick Replay allows custom order flow indicators to work on historical data. It replays the individual historical market data events against the historical bid ask. So you can do things like categorize market volume as buy or sell for cumulative delta. It's hidden by default because loading an ES chart with Tick Replay enabled takes a, a a little bit of time to load. So to turn it on, go to the control center and from the menu, go tools options. From the list on the left, select market data. Then under the historical section, enable show tick replay. Now all that does is make the option show up. You still need to enable it on your chart. So from the chart, right click and go to data series. There should now be a tick replay checkbox that wasn't there before. Now, like I said, it takes a little bit of time to load because it's processing 
every historical order one by one. So it's better to limit the number of days to load setting in the data series settings. There's a little hack you can do here though that will help you out. So that's going to be the next few tips. Tip number eight is to add your data series twice. So the first series you can have tick replay on and only one or two days of data loading. The second series can have tick replay off, but more days of data. Now you get the best of both worlds in one chart, but now you get two panels. So here's tip number nine you can drag and drop data series. Click the series to select it and then drag it to reorder things. You can even combine panels by dragging the series on top of each other. For tip 10, you can also change the drawing order. Once you have an element selected, press shift on your keyboard and scroll the mouse scroll wheel to change the order. There's also some chart styles that work better for this, which will be tip number 11. For instance, here I have a chart with one minute and 30 minute charts stacked on top of each other. You can set the chart style for the 30 minute chart to box or better yet my free custom style multi-period candles now you can have all of your time frames on one chart another useful trick that is relevant here for number 12 transparent is a color so if you have a plot or data series that you need there to calculate things but you don't actually want it to be displayed set the color to transparent and ninja trader will just skip drawing it and i mean it will skip drawing it so it will also prevent the indicator from modifying the chart scale so check out the plots section of the indicator settings and you might find a bunch of hidden subplots that might interest you all right so tip number 13 is to click the like button and leave a comment it helps grow the channel so that i can provide even better content to help you and i don't want to hear anything about making the like button tip 13 being a bad idea idea being superstitious is bad luck okay but here's the real tip number 13 one of the things that annoys me the most about ninja trader is the label the indicators draw at the top of the panel nothing is more annoying than not being able to see what's going on at the high of the day because it's obscured by text especially if you have a ton of indicators added you can fix this by going into the indicator settings and changing the label property to an empty string i hate having to do this when i'm setting up a new chart so i actually Actually created an indicator that does this for you it's included in my free set of tools that I mentioned earlier and is available in the description add it to your chart and it will remove the label from all other indicators on the chart yeah I'm pretty proud of that clever little hack number 14 there are some other cool things in that free pack watermarks is one of the most requested features i like to have the name of the instrument in the background of the chart this makes it easier for others to know what instrument they're looking at if you're sharing a screenshot i don't know why ninja trader doesn't include this like every other platform but uh, whatever, it's an easy fix. Just use my watermark indicator from the free pack. I've seen other versions of this indicator out there, but they actually draw over the chart bars, which is also annoying. My free indicator uses the lower level Sharp DX framework to do the drawing, and this forces the watermark to draw behind everything and ensures the best performance. Another indicator that's in the free pack for tip number 15 is the current bar debug tool. This one is a little more geared towards the programmers it can be hard to figure out what the problem is when a specific bar is breaking your indicator the current bar debug tool helps you find on the chart the bar that is causing the problem the indicator value shows you the index of that bar so combine this with tip number 16 press the middle mouse button when hovering over an indicator a box will appear showing you the exact indicator value at that bar this helps you find the exact bar in question very quickly of course the best debugging tool in ninja trader is the output window which will be tip number 17. you can open it up from the control center menu under new ninja script output window note that it's disabled for some licensed versions though so if you're having a problem with an indicator 
always check the output window first. If the indicator generates any errors, they will print out in the output window. For instance, it might print out the index of the bar it stopped processing at. If you're getting support from a developer, they'll always ask you to check the output window first. That's why I recommend always having an output window open in the background. I'm sure support will appreciate it. There's also a nifty feature hidden in there that I bet even some of the old timers don't know about. Tip number 18, right click on the output window and select Ninja Script utilization monitor. This window shows how much time each component in your workspace is using. So you can identify greedy scripts that are slowing you down. Now for tip number 19, if you can't use the output window or it doesn't have any messages, you might also want to check the logs. There is a log tab in the control center and it also saves logs to the file system. This is usually under your documents and settings in the NinjaTrader 8 slash logs folder. Oh, which reminds me another useful thing that gets saved is backups of your workspaces. Useful if your workspace ever gets corrupted or you add a really dumb indicator that screws things up. The backups are in the workspaces slash recovery folder. Just find the right XML file and move it into the root workspaces folder and then restart NinjaTrader. Okay, tip number 20, another underappreciated component is the market analyzer. I get it. A table of numbers isn't as interesting as a chart, but there's way more in that component than you might realize. It's essential for keeping an eye on the market as a whole. You can add any indicator into a column in the market analyzer and then sort the list by that column. You can also add cell conditions to color the cells based on the value of the column. This makes it easy to get a full sense of the market at a glance. Then on top of all that, you can set alert conditions so you'll never miss an unusual market condition. I have my own list of all of the basic futures and I like to sort them by percentage up or down for that day. And it makes it very easy for me to know where the money is coming from and going to that day. Speaking of alerts, so did you know that you can create alerts on drawing objects? It only only takes a few seconds to right click on the object and select alert. Select whether to alert above or below the line and choose a sound. That's all there is to it. 22, then there's the strategy analyzer, my favorite and least favorite Ninja Trader window. I have entire videos about testing strategies, so I won't spend too much time on that. Instead, I want to highlight an important pitfall that I'm seeing a lot of users fall victim to. So I want to make sure every ninja trader user knows this. You can fool the back tester with exotic bar types. For instance, hike in she bars change the open, high, low, close of a bar. This causes the back tester to take prices that weren't actually available. It's cheating the simulator. Other bar types like volume or range bars can also bias your algo towards trades that don't translate to live very well. So I would not recommend back testing on anything other than time-based bars. I go into this more in my Daniel Inskeep reaction video, he reviewed a vendor that was exploiting this to sell robots. So don't fall for that, guys. Nobody's going to sell you a profitable algorithm. Okay, but I don't want to be a total buzzkill about the strategy analyzer. So here's another thing that many users don't know. So this is what, tip number 23. Did you know the strategy analyzer has a log? Right click the analyzer to select show log and you'll see a record of every back test you've performed. This is the perfect way to keep track of things as you change the code to your strategies. And you get multiple multiple columns with performance metrics so you can sort your strategies to see which ones have the best sharp ratio or make the most money. It's a really powerful tool that I've found to be absolutely essential when I'm developing strategies and a lot of users don't even know it's there. And one last tip which makes it 24, at least I think this is 24. Look, if I screwed up, I'm just going to go with it. This is still tip 24, okay? On the Ninja Trader ecosystem website, there is a public user app share. This is a place where almost anyone can upload the Ninja Trader indicators they've written for free. There are forums out there with big collections of scripts too, but those are for paid members. Everything on the user app share is free and savvy developers should upload to both. I check the app share every month to see what's new and it's crazy to me that so many Ninja Trader users don't know this exists. Okay, so that was a lot. 
I'm pretty sure you guys will have plenty of tips or questions of your own to add in the comments. Make sure to give this video a like, leave your suggestions, and I'm sure we'll have follow-up videos to this one in the future. Don't forget to check out my indicators in the video description. You should also check out my beginning programming videos. I'll put that on the end screen for you, right? You know, the side that's, I, I forget which side it is. Anyways, I'll catch you guys during the morning live streams here on YouTube at 8.30 Eastern time. In the meantime, stay excellent team.